What's up guys and welcome back. Today I am here to showcase my Sork tank build. We are currently level 70 and I wanted to do a midpoint build and show you guys how to make this work at level 70. Obviously I will be doing an updated build when I reach level 100 showing what this is really capable of at, capable of at end game. But for now we're going to go over what makes this work, how it works, and just kind of explain the build after I'll showcase this dungeon being run. I'm actually just going to let it play when uh, after I finish describing the build for you. So let's get straight into it. Uh, first thing that we're going to go over is the uh, sk skills that we are running, because I feel like that's obviously very important, right? So we'll start at the very beginning. Um, we run just one point into Firebolt. Pretty self-explanatory. All Sorks do this. We do this to gain the, the burning passive. Uh, and we do use this on as one of our enchantments. We run Arc Lash. Uh, we don't really need it. Uh, you could actually take this point and stick it back over in Firebolt. I've just been too lazy to do it. Move down to our core skills. We run Charged Bolts. And we run Charged Bolts. Here's the interesting thing. And if you want this build to work the way that it is going to work when you watch this video, although it is less damage, you need to be running the destructive charged bolts morph that reduces the the enemy's damage by 20 percent when you use the ability if you want to be more glass cannon and you want to use this build and not quite as tanky of a way but it still will work and it still will be viable you you'll just take 20 percent more damage you can go with the other morph which will give you a pretty significant damage increase i find it's not needed for pushing uh for farming sigils that are uh at or around your level so uh well we move on to the next tree. We are going to run all four of the defensive skills. Uh, Flame Shill, we morph to the healing version. We run Teleport, all five five points into Teleport. We run Teleport into the 30% damage reduction version. Only one point into Ice Armor. Ice Armor into the damage against vulnerable enemies contributes to its to the Ice Armor's barrier. We run one point into Frost Nova and into the makes enemies of vulnerable for four seconds. Very important that we take the vulnerable morph on this or the build will not work. As we move down to the next tree, we run Ice Blades one point. And we run Ice Blades down to Summoned Ice Blades, which gives 20% of Enhanced Ice Blades cooldown reduction to our other skills. Also very important for the build that we do run this skill. We move down to the Mastery skills. We are running one point in Inner Flames to get to three points into Devouring Blaze. We are running five points into Ball Lightning, and Ball Lightning is morphing down to, if an enemy is hit at least four times by Cast of Ball Lightning, a Crackling Energy is formed. Ball Lightning is our enchantment. This is our second enchantment. Also, very important for the build. This is our enchantment slot. To clarify, Ball Lightning is the second enchantment slot. As we move on, we have one point into Static Discharge, just so we can get down to Invigorating Condent to help with our sustain. When we move down to the Ultimate Skills, we do not run an Ultimate. You see a theory with the builds that I do, right? Okay, so here we come. We want one point into Fiery Surge. That's just so that we can get through to Warmth. And when it comes down to these two passives, you're better off taking Endless Pyre just because at least there's some benefit you get from it, whereas you get no benefit from the top one. So even though it's minuscule and it basically doesn't matter, take the bottom one. And then we move into three points to Warmth, also very important for the build. We need the health. When we also take one point into, cor one point into Course of Currents, we take three points into Electrocution, and we take one point into Convulsions. Very important that three points go into Electrocution for this build. That is, when enemies are critically struck by your shock skills, they deal 15% less damage to you. Extremely important. I think we may have missed something. We also do take uh, one point into Align the Elements up here in the Conjuration Skills tree, and three points into Mana Shield. Also very important that we're running this. When it comes down to our key passive, we're gonna run Veer's Mastery. This allows us to do 25% increased damage to close enemies and take or, and take 25%, sorry, I worded that wrong. This allows enemies to deal 25% less damage to us and we deal 25% damage more to them, critical damage. All right, now we will 
move on to the Paragon board. Doop, doop. So the first board is pretty explanatory, right? What happens is we're going to path up the right side. I'll uh, make this bigger and zoom in on this glyph so you can see it and see what we're running. We're running the Flame Feeder glyph in this board. This is obviously just for the level 70 build. I will update this Paragon board with a more refined version once I reach level 100. On the next board, we are running the Burning Instinct board. And we are running Destruction. Keep in mind that uh, while you're looking at these boards, I, I did my best to make sure that when I was showcasing this build, that I was doing it in a way that would be uh, representative of what most people are, how they're, uh, how they're, they're kind of working out at level 70. So my glyphs aren't leveled, right? So you can see like this glyph's not leveled all the way. I don't have the increased radius on them or anything. It's just important that we get the five piece bonus on them for now at level 70. Now we're going to path over to the right. All we want on this board really is Static Surge. Stunning close enemies restores 10 mana, mana and very important part to how this build works as well, since we are always going to want to be in melee range as much as possible. And since we're pathing to this node anyways, you might as well grab these damage to stunned enemies and elites. Then as we path up, we are taking the Ceaseless Conduit board, and at 70, we have enough points to get over to our damage increase bonuses over here. All right, so let's go over gear. And the Helm slot, obviously I do not have perfect rolls in all my gear. This is a level 70 build. I, I just literally barely got into tier four. But on our helmet, I can tell you what is most important is you need total armor percentage. And yes, you do lose damage by putting these on your build, but this is a tank build. This is not a glass cannon build. I can't stress this enough. You have to have survivability or this build will not work because you will get melted when you sit in the middle of these guys, okay? So what's important is that we have a total armor roll on our helmet. The rest of these are bad rolls. So um, I, once I finish the build out, I will take them. The imprint is extremely important. Take. Taking direct damage has a 6% chance to reset the cooldown of one of your defensive skills. The build will not work unless you're running this important. Very important. For our chest piece, you're in Raiment of the Infinite. You all should know what that do. Um, when you teleport, you suck the guys in, it stuns them. This is also required for this build. You could run the build without it, but it would not play as smoothly. On our gloves, we do go plus four ranks of charge bolts. I do have pretty, pretty good rolls on my gloves right now so you can copy this exactly critical strike damage you want uh, critical strike chance lightning critical strike damage lucky hit chance and ranks to charge bolts for the imprint you want your cast of charge bolts have a 24 percent chance to be attracted to enemies and last 300 percent longer for our pants we want to go all defensive outside of four ranks of ball lightning again we want a total armor roll we want flat damage reduction and damage against enemies that are burning on our boots Boots are most, mostly personal preference. The only thing that I can tell you that is required is we want ranks of teleport and mana cost reduction. As far as the other two, I prefer movement speed and the fourth crackling energy damage is just not a roll. It's not a roll that I would recommend for these. It's just, these are the boots that I have. Uh, on the imprint on this, I'm still undecided, but uh, extra, extra movement speed with critical strike damage helps us stay out of trouble. So we're, we have that on there for now. And here for the bread and butter of the build. The Staff of Lamb Essen. This is what makes this build work. What this does is when you cast Charge Bolts, it causes them to move through the enemies, okay? But they did, but the, the bolts themselves deal less damage. You'd be, you could be saying, why do you want to do that? Well, for one, the way Charge Bolts works is when you cast it, it splits out into five, right? So the closer we are to a target, the more bolts hit that target. Now, the passive from that ability is when we use charge bolts, if three bolts hit the same target, it causes a lightning explosion. So if we're close enough to an enemy, we always charge that explosion. Well, if we can group the guys in a ball with raiment of the infinite, the chest piece we're just talking about, and we use charge bolts, it pierces through all the enemies. All three bolts hit every enemy in that group, right? So you have three bolts. So you get an explosion for every single guy in that group. 
So once you once you once you group the guys up, boom, they're gone. It's that simple, right? Because you hit them once, you or twice, you hit them once or twice, and they just get so many explosion procs on them, uh, lightning nova procs, that they just explode and die. It's super fun to play, and as you'll see in the video after this, uh, we're running critical strike to vulnerable damage. Uh, glyphs on that and we're running max health glyphs on the rest of our armor we're running armor glyphs armor jewelry we'll go over the jewelry real quick on this is pretty self-explanatory again we want a max armor roll we want mana cost reduction and the other two rolls that i have are not good that is not what i would normally be running uh you'd, you'd want to go uh you know more something like health or like uh uh, resource regeneration or like ranks to defensive skills all those would be really good rolls i just don't have good rolls on this yet for our imprint we we want the Udil increased damage to immobilize stunned or frozen enemies. As you can see, this I have the lowest roll possible on this, and you're still going to see how we clear this dungeon. Uh, on the ring, pretty, uh, the rings are where we can go damage. So since we're going so defensive and everything else, we can go damage on our rings. Um, we, so it's just basic stuff. You want to get critical strike chance. Uh, like I said, my rings aren't great either. I don't have great rolls on them, so ignore it. But you want like critical strike chance, critical strike damage, lightning critical strike damage, uh, maybe like mana cost reduction or lucky hit chance, etc. Just good damage rolls. For the imprint, we're running burning damage. Has up to a 12% chance to restore 10 mana. Again, I have the lowest roll possible on this, so this will get much better once I find the right rolls. Uh, on the second ring, you want using a cooldown restores 23 mana. Without this imprint, you will have to run a basic attack if you want to constantly be doing damage. If you do not have this cooldown restores mana imprint. It, if you don't have this, put your basic skill on so that you can do damage during your downtime while you don't have mana to cast things. All right, that's it for showcasing the build. I am going to cut now to the video of me running through this dungeon. If anyone has any questions, ask in the comments. I'll be happy to, to share or answer anything that I can. As always, thanks for watching and enjoy life. I'm not ready yet.
I'm not ready yet. I need time to prepare that. I need time to prepare that. I'm not ready yet.
I need time to prepare that. 